gosh, thank you for watching another video on elder-led ministry here at First Baptist. Again, we are doing this so that you, as a part of our church family, can be educated to make a thoughtful decision on if we transition to be elder-led. We don't want you just to do that because we, as your pastor, say, hey, we think we should be elder-led. We want you to be persuaded by God's word uh, because that is our final authority and it is sufficient for our lives that we live both as the body of Christ and as followers of Jesus. And so in this video, we're going to answer the question, uh, what about ordination? What would that look like for lay elders being non-staff elders? What would that look like for uh, those going into what we would say as gospel ministry or vocational ministry? And so Travis, why don't you answer that question for us? All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, you know, one of, one of the things, um, you know, in your your opening was was talking about uh, this being Bible Bible based, being founded in Scripture, and I know all through this journey for the two of us and, and for our pastors as a whole, that's been our heart. Is that we are we are leading our church family based upon God's word. So when you you talk about the topic of ordination, um, this is one of those areas where Scripture does give give flexibility. Uh, though you can find in Scripture the the importance of setting apart those um, that God has called and, uh, and equipped, whether it be the office of um, elder or the office you know of, of deacon, uh, you you can see uh, this modeled in Scripture. Two verses uh, that I want us to look at to to try and uh, basically support the the idea of of ordination from scripture acts 14 uh, verse uh, 23 when they appointed elders and that word appointed would speak of of an official act that was made by uh, God's people when they when they appointed elders uh, for them in every uh, church they prayed with fasting they committed them to the Lord in whom they had uh, believed and, you know, one of the things, um, I want to go back, it says, when they appointed elders for them in every church. And so you see here uh, in the early church the plurality of elders. There were elders appointed, commissioned, called, ordained for every church. So every church had a plurality of elders. And then in Acts uh, 13, uh beginning in verses, verse 2, verse, verse 2 and, and 3. As they were worshiping the Lord uh, and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart. And so there again you see uh, a church affirming, lead, leaders affirming uh, those for ministry. It said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for, uh, to which I have called them. Then after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them out. Mm -hmm. And so biblically, you can see um, ordination uh, taking place with, with church leadership. And, and ordination speaks of uh, a setting apart uh, and, and putting in place a, a position of recognized authority recognized uh, leader now you know when you start using the word authority people get afraid of that but authority comes from God mm -hmm. you know the authority uh, within governments whether you know those in government recognize it or not that authority is given to them by God those who serve in positions of authority an elder in the church that's that's God given and so we'll answer uh, to God and we answer through his people, and then even in the home, as as husbands, there's a God-given authority, but uh, that authority is not to, to abuse, but rather to bless. Um, and so this idea of, of recognizing and setting apart uh, men for the purpose, specifically of the office of elder, can, can clearly be identified uh, in Scripture. And so part of what our conversation is today is, you know, what does that look like for us? Yeah. What does that look like for, for First Baptists? Um, if, if those listening to us have been a part of our fellowship for 
uh, just you know in the recent past, then they've seen that step take place even with you and in ordaining uh, a young man to be an elder who who has shown himself to be spiritually mature, and God has called into the gospel ministry vocationally. I mean that that is your vocation uh, versus. Um, having someone should we choose to go to elder led one of the vital pieces that I would tell you that is missing now that we desperately need is lay elders Mm -hmm. and so what does what does that look like and I am of the conviction that uh, while lay elders and staff elders need to be seen and recognized as equals they both carry the same authority. That when we ordain, when we set apart, when we commission a lay elder, it would be to minister to the body here at First Baptist Church. In other words, you know, in your life or my life, we have been uh, commissioned to, to take the gospel wherever God would lead us. And right now, God's led us to be here at First Baptist Church. but. There, there may come a time when God would lead one of our staff elders to go and so, serve somewhere else. And so that, that uh, calling and that setting apart would follow them uh, to that next ministry with the blessings of the ordaining church, which, you know, for you would be our, our fellowship. Um, but with our lay elders, I, I believe that... Uh, we should recognize the fact of what God is doing in their life and through their life here in this fellowship. And so the process of of setting them apart and ordaining them would be specifically to serve as an elder here in our fellowship. Uh, One of the things that possibly could happen, which would be uh, tremendous, They, they they may feel called vocationally uh, to go and serve as an elder, and at that time, I, I would say that we would we would step back, we would uh, pray with that that brother, uh, and and be a part of celebrating what God is doing in his life. And should there through that process be a, an agreement by the church family to set apart this brother to serve not only as an elder within our fellowship but to to be commissioned to go and take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world then there would be a a ceremony a a setting apart for uh, that lay elder to to be recognized as one that God has called to go outside of our church to take the gospel to wherever God would would equip them but but that would be uh, an additional step an additional process that we would have in vetting and sending that brother out. Yeah, and I, I think we see some of that in Scripture even. Like we just read earlier, uh, the sending out of Paul and Barnabas, mm-hmm. right? And so we see Barnabas being sent out for a specific mission, a specific calling to go and to take the gospel to this place. But then even in this passage you read in Acts 14, one of the very first times in the entire Bible, the entire New Testament, where we see it referred to individual churches, Mm -hmm. like every church. Before that, it was mainly talking about like the church, Church. like all believers who have been called out by God. And then when we see here these every single individual churches, we also see them saying, and there's elders, plural, Mm -hmm. in each of these churches. Um, And for us even, like we're not pastors of the church 10 miles down the street. We're not pastors of the sheep on the other side of the world in a different country. We're pastors of this church and mm-hmm. they would be pastors of this church you're just recognizing that sometimes those who have been in vocational ministry are called to go somewhere else exactly um, whereas people who this is their church mm-hmm. they have their other vacation uh they most likely are not mm-hmm. called to do that mm-hmm. yeah. and and I, and I would say you know even among the the elders there will be uh and, and we'll discuss this you know uh, at, at another time but there'll be a lead elder, uh, a lead pastor, and and right now I have the privilege of filling that that seat. And there may be a lay elder that would uh, feel called in in some point to be that lead elder Mm -hmm. uh, in another fellowship 
and we would want to prepare and equip and disciple and do everything we could for that brother to prepare him to answer that call and for me part of that process would be going back and, and uh, expanding uh, that conversation about God's call in their life and that it's, it's extended beyond that desire of serving First Baptist Church but now I have a desire to go wherever God wants to call me and it may be a mission field you know uh, and, and everywhere is a mission field but I may it may be international uh, work and, and so th- to me uh, again scripturally you know can you find this not so much uh, you, you can as you were referring to every church you know <laughs> appointing elders as a congregation this is where we must decide how can we best steward this office of elder and and that's where I've come to uh, an agreement in my own mind and heart uh, yeah. as, as a healthy way of doing it I, I agree fully uh, and so I hope that that makes sense of what it would look like the difference between ordaining a non-staff elder versus someone who is going to go into vocational ministry uh, because there's slightly different callings that yeah. we see. There's mm-hmm. there's different lifelong trajectories in both of those paths. And we want to be there with that family and with that man to affirm that, to pray with them, to love them. Uh, and we want to invite the church into it. And exactly. that's, that's the process of ordaining uh, because that's the authority that's yeah. been given to the church by Christ himself. Yeah, And, and, and I'll say this um, as we wrap things up. The local church is uh, God's plan mm. for expanding the gospel influence. And so no one individual can sit here and, and go out on their own. Uh, even in the, in, the, in the book of Acts, you see the church sending Paul and Barnabas. And so uh, it needs to be the church that is sending, uh, sending out its its people and particularly as we talk about elders if they feel called to go out it's the church that would make that that decision and send them out yeah we exactly we even see that when a church is started here's the church of jerusalem in the beginning of acts sending someone to make sure they're teaching the correct thing exactly. right because somebody just can't randomly go out and start a church well they can but they're not supposed to Let, let's let's be clear uh and that's why uh affirming that is really important in the church exactly Well, thank you guys for taking time to listen to this video. Um, As always, if you have more questions about ordination, uh, we would both love to discuss that with you as well as with the rest of your pastors. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. Uh, We love you guys, and we're so thankful that you're a part of our church family here at First Baptist.